Okay, what's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Now, I've never really talked about my priorities as a reviewer. You know, what things do I value? Do I have any principles or morals behind my reviews? The second thing I wanna talk about is my benchmarking process. You know, what I've done in the past and how I'm gonna change that and improve that going forward in 2021 with all the new laptops coming out. So let's just dive right into it. Number one, you guys come first. Ahead of brands, ahead of maybe what Nvidia wants me to say, I'm always going to try to put your best interest ahead of those companies because you guys are the reason that I'm able to do this in the first place. So thank you very much for your support. So just know that that's my goal setting out. I'm not perfect, but I'm always going to try to put you guys first. My second principle for doing reviews is always trying to be honest and accurate as possible. Some of the things I value is full disclosure on any sponsorships and I never take a sponsorship directly from any manufacturers. Number three, I try to make my videos as helpful as possible, which to me means making them simple and approachable, but also thorough at the same time. Number four, I want to grow as a reviewer. I want to improve, I want to learn. To me, that means I need to have the humility to admit when I make mistakes, correct them, and move forward. So those are some foundational principles that I believe make for a strong, good review channel. And I just wanted to disclose them and talk to you openly about them. So now let's talk about my benchmarks, what I've done in the past and what I'm gonna do to improve them. Now I always bench my laptops at 73 degree ambient room temperature. If it gets too hot or too cold, I pause and wait to reach the correct temperature again. Now I have purchased a thermometer as well to make sure that the desk temperature stays accurate. So going forward, I'll be even more accurate and consistent with my temperatures in my reviews. Now I prep every single laptop I review the same way. Now the first thing I do when I first get a laptop is make sure it goes through all the Windows updates. Then I'd update the video driver, check to see if there's a new firmware. Now I disable in-game overlays from GeForce Experience, as well as the Windows game bar, because I don't want those overlays affecting performance at all. And then I install HW Info 64, and MSI Afterburner with my in-game overlay. And I do let those things run in the background through all of my benchmarks consistently across all my laptops. So if it does impact performance in any way, it's at least consistent across every machine. Now, the last thing I do before running benchmarks is I set the performance profile to the highest possible and max fans if it's available on that chassis. Now I also stress test every laptop that I review. This involves running the Heaven benchmark and the Firestrike physics test at the same time. Now the reason I use these programs is that it's very easy to maintain a high CPU and GPU usage at the same time, which really pushes laptops to the thermal limit. To me, if a laptop can survive this GPU CPU stress test without having severe thermal throttling and really high temperatures, then that means the manufacturer has at least tune the power limits and the CPU and GPU in a way that the laptop will last a long time and will also not throttle horribly under normal gaming performance. Now, whenever I start my stress test, I have a period of heat saturation where I wait 15 minutes for the CPU and GPU to heat up all of the heat pipes and get the laptop nice and toasty. From there, I run the stress test for five minutes and reset HW Info to capture my benchmarking period for that five minutes. After five minutes is up, I check the average TDP, clock speed, and temperature for both the CPU and GPU. And then I repeat the process for each fan profile. So if there's like a silent mode, a default mode, a high performance mode, and then a high performance with max fan, I'll do all four of those profiles and break down all of the clock speed, temperatures, and TDPs. Now overall, I really like this stress test and I don't think it needs any changes. Let me know in the comments down below if you think there are any ways to improve it. Now the ways in which I'm going to revamp my benchmarks in 2021, I'm gonna do a total of 30 game benchmarks. So that means I'm gonna test 15 different game benchmarks at two different resolutions, QHD and 1080p. Now I'm not gonna test at 4K resolution because I don't think most laptop users will be gaming at 4K. Then I'm gonna be doing five AAA titles with RTX and DLSS off. And then I've got five with RTX and DLSS on. And then I'm gonna test out five esports titles to see how it performs in competitive games. And this is what's gonna determine my opinion for the overall performance of the GPU. Now for CPU performance, I'll be using Cinebench R23, as well as the same handbrake rendering CPU test from before. Now I believe this new suite of games will be much better overall for benchmarking and performance comparison. Comparison? Compos? Comp comparison. 
Now I'm going to take all 30 game benchmarks and total them up and then divide them by the cost of the laptop to get us what I believe will be a more accurate price to performance summary. And I've been doing price to performance in my laptops for a long time now and I believe it's the best way to represent the value that a laptop has for a consumer. And the last major thing I want to add to my benchmarks is 1% lows to better represent any kind of stuttering or frame rate issues that are going on. So that's everything that I'm doing to try to improve improve my overall reviews and benchmarking going forward in 2021. It's honestly going to be extremely challenging and I expect I'm probably going to need to tweak some things like maybe 30 benchmarks is going to be too much work and I might just cut it down to just the native resolution benchmark. So if it's a QHD display, I'll just do everything at QHD level. If it's a 1080p display, I'll just do everything at 1080. I'm not sure yet. What do you think? Would you guys really rather see 1080p and QHD or would you rather just see the native resolution? It is literally double the work to have both resolutions tested. So if I'm going to do it, I definitely want it to be worth my time. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. I will see you in the next one. Brandon, out.